Alright guys, today we're going to talk about 5 secrets that SEO companies dare not tell you before you engage them and let's jump right into it uh, let me just smaller the screen here um, yeah so that's what we're going to cover today uh, 5 secrets that SEO companies dare not tell you uh, PS because they want to profit so Let's start with secret number one. And secret number one, that is most companies or most SEO companies only focus on delivering rankings, but not sales and leads for businesses. So what does that mean? Well, essentially most SEO companies um, in general uh, would want to rank you on Google, but uh, in return, right, they don't really uh, come up with the marketing strategy for you in order to generate leads and sales. Because although rankings are important, uh, it doesn't directly help you acquire more leads and more sales if your marketing strategy right, is not positioned uh, to put your business as the optimal choice for your customers. So many times uh, when customers are searching on Google for a certain product or a certain service, they could still be in the comparing stage whereby they want to compare across like a couple of vendors and as a result, they might not even go with you. So I have had multiple clients that, that uh, was ranking really well for their money keywords. It's like at least uh, top three positions. And at the end of the day, um, they were not getting the leads they want because um, when you look at the marketing strategy uh, of their website right, or their business, they're just kind of trying to pull a hard sale, which is, uh, look, my product is cheaper than the rest and therefore you should do business with me. But that shouldn't be the way. Ideally, what you want to have to do is uh, to offer something of value in advance and that would position you as the expert in your field or your area of expertise. So for instance, like for myself, because I do SEO for companies, for entrepreneurs, right? Um, if you were to go to my website right now, let's just take a look. Uh, SEOexpertgym.com. So the first thing that you see when you come to the website is literally uh, the headline, which says, shocking report reviews, five secrets SEO companies will never tell you. And by having this particular headline, it establishes me as the authority over uh, my competitors because I'm literally giving value to a potential customer that comes across my website as compared to my competitors. Now, the reason why that's important is because if right now you look at uh, SEO company all across uh, the island, right? I mean, all across the country, uh, specifically in Singapore, is that you'll find everyone is just trying to compare themselves as, you know, based on price, right? You can see here it says standard from $500 a month, 15 to 20 keywords, you know, leading SEO companies since 2006 with more than 1,000 SEO clients. I mean, all this is good and all, it's important, but what if you come across, you know, a headline that says, that stands up, Right, like Singapore SEO expert consultant reviews five dirty secrets of SEO and whatnot. So that ideally is the kind of headline that you want, rather than just saying that oh I'm the best, I'm this and and all that. Uh, number one SEO agency. So you could see it's very, it's like a hot sale, right? It's like trying to sell you right off the, the get go before you even know the person, right? So instead of doing that, what you could do is you could. Um, demonstrate value uh, by giving something of uh, value of um, report right to establish yourself as the authority in your field before you even get the customer and that's so powerful because it positions you differently uh, across all your competitors so if I want to run a Google ad right now and you know like all these guys here ideally I want to try to position myself differently and be the black sheep um, of my industry so it could work for any industry like 
uh, you know, if you're a chiropractor, you want to say things like um, eight things that chiropractors would never reveal to their patients, right? That would stand out more than like all these guys over here, for instance, Singapore number one chiropractors, they're competing on price, right? Because if you go by the price, okay, if you live by price, you die by price, like believe it or not, because it's, it's a never ending game, right? Somebody here is charging at $99, you're charging at $38, it's, it's not gonna end. Like you're just trying to undercut each other. It's not a long, long term solution to, to your brand, to your business, right? And I mean, I'm not running Google Ads right now because um, I have other lead generation strategies. But the point is, if I were to run a Google Ad or uh, whatnot, I want to make sure that I I stand out from the rest. Because if I don't stand out, I'm just another guy. I'm just another company doing the same thing that everyone and their moms are doing. And that's not the position that I want to be yet. So that's, that's that. So let's move on. So secret number two is that SEO companies typically churn and burn for selfish reasons. Now, what exactly does that mean? Um, so most companies in general, most SEO companies in general, um, want to acquire as many clients as possible because the owner of the SEO company or the owner of the SEO agency just wants to make profit, right? I mean, nothing wrong with that. Like they have a family to support and whatnot, like nothing wrong with making a profit. but when you scale at such a high volume, when you scale with like hundreds of clients, there is only so much attention span that you could give to each particular client and each account, right? More so if each account uh, is paying you less than the, the other account that you're brought in that's paying you more, right? Because there's more budget to be allocated, there's more resources that you could be, uh, allocate to them. So my point is this, even if you were to engage a company that has loads of experience, right? Many, many clients. There is so, only so much time they can spend on your account. And they are literally just churning and burning because they want to acquire as much profit as possible at the end of the day, because this is business, right? Everybody's in business to make profit. So, um, I mean, it's kind of like, a thing that most companies want to do because in order to scale, in order to grow their business, uh, they have to come up with a, a method, right? A proven methodology to, to scale and as a result, handle as many clients as possible. So ideally, uh, prior to engaging the, the, the company, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you do your due diligence and identify what you're getting out of the deal, right? Like what exactly are they doing? Are they building links? Are they writing content? Uh, what, what exactly is the SEO company doing for you, right, before you engage them? So more on that later. And let's continue next. So secret number three is that, um, yeah, it's actually pretty much what I covered just now, what you should do to ensure that SEO is suitable for your business. So in doing your due diligence, you wanna make sure that, um, you find out what's the method that the SEO company is doing in terms of getting you to rank. Because if what they're doing is just buying a whole bunch of backlinks to your site in order for it to rank, then it's gonna get penalized in the long run. And keep in mind that I have had clients that had multiple like uh, penalties before because they engaged a, a, a SEO company that just purely bought backlinks. And when they got uh, penalized by Google, there was a manual action penalty and their rankings just dropped as a result of that. So you want, you want to kind of find out what the SEO company is doing in terms of getting you the rankings because if you buy a whole bunch of backlinks, right, you could just rank for like a couple of days and perhaps a couple of weeks or months even and subsequently the results just tank because it's uh, because Google is able to find that out Right, especially right now, uh, as 2020 approaches, they have systems in place, right, to detect that your link is fraudulent. It's it's not an organic backlink. It's not a genuine link, right. So I think that you shouldn't try to challenge Google on that. And for the longevity of your website, you want to make sure that 
you try to stay away from buying a whole bunch of backlinks, right? Like uh, many clients that I've seen before, uh, they bought like a whole bunch of private blog network backlinks, PBN backlinks, and they got penalized as a result. So I'm never doing that kind of shit again for any clients. I used to do that, but I realized that that's not the right way to do it. And uh, it creates more, more trouble than uh, benefits for your website. So next, uh, yeah, so you gotta find out that uh, whether SEO right is suitable for your industry because some in some instances SEO is really not required for your industry uh, simply because there isn't anyone searching for your product or your service so you could see here I use a software called Ahrefs uh, it's a paid software you gotta pay like a couple hundreds for it every month um, say for instance you're a chiropractor in Chicago um, you want to check out what's the search volume for that and you could see over here the search volume for that is like 600 searches per month. So uh, we have Chicago Chiropractor, we have Chiropractor, Chiropractor Chicago. So there are indeed people uh, in Chicago actually looking for a chiropractor on Google. And from there, you can even have an estimate of whether it's difficult to rank for that keyword. And you know this would actually help you determine whether SEO uh, is necessary for you as a business owner. So there are many times, right, where the business owner is just searching for SEO and then um, just looking for a quick fix, right? As long as I can get my website to rank on Google, people will find me. But even if you target a keyword that you could rank on, you know, the first page or even position number one for, if there's no search volume for it, it's it's not gonna cut it, right? It's it's pointless because there isn't any volume. There's no proven data to support that. Uh, you're going to get some actual business from the search from SEO. Then you're just dumping money into nothing, right? So ideally what I want to start with is you want to run like a PPC campaign to it, like for the keyword first. And if it proves to be successful, if it proves to be profitable in the long run, then you could start uh, engaging an SEO company and do it for you. So if you don't want to pay for this software Ahrefs, you can also use Google Keyword Planner. Uh, Google Keyword Planner is free. All you got to do is just um, Google Google Keyword Planner. So literally just type in uh, Google Keyword Planner and just click on the first link, obviously this one, and then you'll be able to use the Keyword Planner for free. It actually gives you an estimate of the search volume. And from there, uh, you would be able to determine whether SEO is a good fit for your business. So next, uh, secret number four, uh, I've, brought, I've mentioned this earlier, you should focus more on content than building links. So um, most SEO company strategies, right? Like most, most of their strategies, right? Is to build links after they have uh, implemented the content side of things in order to rank quickly. But in the long run, uh, it kind of gets your website penalized as I mentioned before. So just to show you, I know what I talk, I'm talking about, right? Um, you could see like one of the keywords that I rank, uh, position number one for, is like this keyword here, online reputation management, Singapore. There's like probably a 50 monthly search for it. It's not amazing, but the point is that uh, I actually got a lead from, from this uh, like a couple of days back. So you could see uh, it's ranking right here. And if I go into incognito mode, just to show that, you know, the, re the result sticks, it's not because it's cached or my search history or whatnot, like it's here. Um, I pretty much outrank like another website that has a domain rating of I don't know, 70 or 60 or something, like media one and, and whatnot, and the rest of the guys here, they probably have like a higher domain rating than me. Uh, but it's not about the backlinks, it's it's always about the content that you have created on the web page, uh, whether it's matching what users are searching for. And as soon as Google is able to detect that, you know, your search is benefiting uh, 
is benefiting the user more than somebody else's uh, search, then they will get you to rank higher on Google. So uh, all you want to do is you want to make sure that you create really, really helpful content and the content matches what uh, the user is searching for. And that's how you can rank on the long run. And if you want to earn backlinks, right, like organic backlinks in the long run, um, all you have to do is just write useful content based on what users are searching for. So what you want to do is you want to research, uh, uh, you want to research on the keyword and make sure that the keyword is not that competitive and you can rank for that keyword. And once you do that, you will organically start getting backlinks in the long run because people are always finding stuff to link to. And if, uh, if your search query is uh, helpful for users, helpful for anyone in general, you will just earn that backlink in the long run. So just create high quality content, unique and relevant content, and that's how you could earn backlinks. So this extract is directly from Google themselves. Uh, they actually find that link building is, you know, I mean, not that they find, but they actually are quite strict against link building. They find that, uh, you know, they're just trying to advise you to create unique relevant content in order to get high quality relevant links, right? So um, that's how you should go about having a long-term strategy for your website so that your website doesn't get penalized. And next for secret number five, uh, we want to make sure that you build a strong back end customer database for your business. This is critical to the long term growth of your SEO campaign. I think this not, doesn't just apply to your SEO campaign, but applies to your business in general. Uh, you want to make sure that you have uh, a back end database where you collect emails coming in. Right. So for instance, for my website, uh, I want to collect name and an email. Uh, of potential customers that come in looking for SEO services because that's what I do. So regardless of whatever industry that you're in, right, you want to do the same thing, which is to collect name and emails so that you could uh, continuous, continu continuously market your products and your service to, uh, to that person's, uh, I mean, to that potential customer, right? Because especially so, uh, if you are selling a high ticket item, right? A high ticket item that is like $2,000 or $3,000. You want to make sure that uh, you collect their contact details first, and then you start nurturing their uh, potential customer through an email sequence, right? This is like basics of internet marketing. You need to capture the name and the email of that uh, potential customer first. And the reason why this is so powerful is because uh, when you can establish a contact point and then you slowly start to market to them in the future uh, you actually start adding value to them first right because these days uh, online marketing is all about content marketing you want to make sure that you could add value to them in advance before you ask for the sale mm -hmm. right so regardless of whatever industry you are in uh, you want to make sure that you are able to uh, add value first before you get them to buy your product, before you get them to buy your service. And that's how you acquire customers and that's how you beat your competitors and dominate uh, your market in the long run. So I think that's about it. Uh, so ideally, uh, this is how the process would look like. If you have prospects coming in from SEO or Google Ads or Facebook Ads or whatever it is, you want to get the lead to opt in Right. So from there, once they opt in into your name and your email sequence, um, you can actually redirect them to a page where you give them an irresistible offer. And this irresistible offer is where you put uh, probably an offer that is like risk free, right? Like maybe a free sample or a free trial or something like that, that uh, would spark their interest, right? As compared to uh, your competitors because your competitor is probably just trying to sell right off the bat, right? They're trying to compete based on price. They're trying to compete based on um, 
I try to copy based on price, years of experience, number of years they've been doing business, uh, you know, they are the cheapest, and all those variables are not uh, something that you want to compete on because there's no longevity on that, right? There's always going to be somebody more experienced than you. There's always going to be somebody that has been longer in the marketplace than you. So how can you differentiate yourself from the marketplace? And that's by offering value in advance and offering value to them first. So once you do that, uh, you can continue them uh, in your email sequence, in your funnel, and that's how you get them to become your client in the long run, right? So that's that. I hope that kind of helped you. I hope you uh, learned something in this video. Probably not, uh, not too long, uh, probably uh, quite long winded. It's gonna be like, what, 20 minutes or so? And yeah. I hope uh, you got some true value from this video and if you uh, have any questions feel free to comment uh, in the comment uh, in the comments below and yeah I'll see you next time